Welcome to Capital Events with me, Dale Jan. And me, Tony Howes. Capital Events is Capital Radio 101.7 FM celebration of all the arts, literature and events happening here in Perth. And especially the people that make all these things happen in our state. So, welcome, welcome to, to Capital, Capital Events. Events. Now, our next guest in tonight's Capital Events is Perth's TV and radio historian, Ken Mackay. Ken Mackay, welcome to Capital Events. Now, I'm going to ask you straight off, I know you've been involved with radio and television since Adam wore shorts. Perhaps not right at the beginning of radio, but certainly at the beginning of television. How did you get involved in the first place? Well, I was working for a company called House Photographics. They were actually developing the 16mm news film for the ABC at that time. Now, I had prior to that, obtained a, uh, a certificate in television and radio servicing. But I didn't expect to get into that. I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll have a crack at processing film at Channel 7. So I toddled out there. And this was very new then, of course. Well, this was well, about 61, 62. Yeah, yeah. And they said, oh, look, um, we don't have a job in that, but are you interested in being a junior technician after seeing the, the pieces of paper? So I said, sure. <laughs> So I joined then, and with the team, which was uh, with their new OB van, they built it themselves. And this was in preparation for the 1962 Commonwealth and Empire Games. Of course. So it was pretty new and pretty green. But you could make mistakes, and and you learned by them rather than being sacked by them. Well, it wasn't just a case of that. It was a case of the entire OB team was learning. Yes. Well, actually, the first OB they did was Head of the River. Right. And they had Sid Donovan parked up in King's Park looking down, <laughs> and the entire thing was fog-bound. <laughs> now, Sid was never short of a word. <laughs> no, I recall that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he continued on regardless. <laughs> Until the fog cleared, <laughs> calling a race that he couldn't see. But that was their first OB. They did a few more there. In the same year, 62, there was the Inner Dominion trotting at Gloucester Park. But one that I do remember, there was a golf course in uh, in Yokine, Mount Yokine. And they attempted that. <laughs> <laughs> follow the follow the little white ball. Yeah. <laughs> well, everything was going quite fine, apart from one thing. Uh, to get a direct line back to the studio, the link path went through some gum trees. Oh now, that was fine until it rained. <laughs> Once it rained, <laughs> the uh, the signal became very uh, unstable. So um, when we arrived back and parked the van very solemn about the whole thing, it wasn't too good, yeah. <laughs> nothing to be proud of. Um, we arrived back the next day and the entire thing was decorated in streamers and balloons and, and cheeky signs. And I think the person probably responsible for that, and you may know him, a chappy by the name of Colin Gorey. Oh, yes, yes. And Colin actually was one of the pioneers of OBs with Channel 9, STW Channel yes, 9. Yes, yes, that's when I knew him, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he was always a prankster. Yeah. Yeah. You never know what to expect with Colin. He, he played a great prank on Lloyd Lawson. Oh, yes. During the commercial breaks, they sometimes shot off down to the, the set area where there was scrap timber left over from making sets. And accompanied by another gentleman by the name of Lindsay Smith, they decided to chop up some timber. And then they decided, oh, a great opportunity because there's a bandsaw there. We'll play a prank on Lloyd. Now, at that stage, Lloyd seemed to be working continuously. Yes. Well, he, was the, he became the big star of television, as well, far as yeah. we were concerned, yeah. But not only was he um, program manager, but he would be doing his show during the day, and at night he'd be booth announcing. Anyway, there he was up in the booth, and uh, Colin and Lindsay came up rushing in uh, with a shoebox, and poking out of the shoebox was a thumb. <laughs> wrapped around it was cotton wool uh, coloured with mercurochrome so it looked the real thing ghastly and they caught they caught Lloyd who leapt into action immediately 
rang for an ambulance. <laughs> anyway, they thought, oh, it's getting a bit serious now. And they, they had a bit of a problem talking him down. I that. bet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when, when Lloyd sees something, Lloyd sees something, and you can't change that. But, but anyway, come back to you. What, as a, as a little boy, for example, were, were you keen on crystal sets and oh, all those yeah. sorts of things? Made crystal sets. Well, yeah. One of the great things, the Invic Park, which wasn't too far away from us, there was a hardware store that sold second-hand material. You could buy the old wind-up telephones, oh, yes. as used on the farms, for 50 pence in those days, and all yeah. manner of things, <laughs> and all the ingredients necessary for a, a, a crystal set. Oh, well, if one had the money, you could actually buy a transceiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been a walkie-talkie from World War Two, but <laughs> <laughs> they were there. Yeah. And this is what set you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was good fun. I mean, and in fact, uh, and, and I mean, we're going to talk to you more as as the year goes by on other things. But that's sort of been your staple diet. This whole technical side of a creative art. Always the backroom boy, which was okay. Always got to see what was going on yes. and uh, managed to capture the things that some people would rather forget. <laughs> you, you've been at uh, Channel 7 when it, virtually from its beginning. Well, from 62 to 73. Yeah, yeah. Then what happened to you after that? ABC. Yes. And, of course, that's where we came across each that's other. That's right. Right through until I f uh, finished up there and you were still there. Well, I was there till 93. Mm. But they were good days, actually. Yes. In fact, I enjoyed radio better than ABC TV. Yes, I think I agree with you, yeah. The thing was that at seven it was like a family because when they started it was all bush mm. and everyone worked together. You'd even have the bosses in the canteen and we'd all mingle together. Well, well I think you're right. I mean, butting in here, Ken, but yeah. I can recall, you know, coming out to seven uh, to do uh, puppet voices for Coralie and, mm. and Brian Williams and all. And... Even though I was just a casual coming in, mm. uh, you were treated as if, if you belonged right mm. from the word go. Yeah, they were great people, and Coralie, of course, what a wonderful lady yes. she was. Yes. And only passed away recently, very sad. Very sad. We, we were all looking forward to her 100th Hundred. birthday. Well, I think we shall have her 100th birthday, and well, she'll be there, she'll be there. <laughs> well, there was, there was talk of that, mm. and, and hopefully it'll come to pass. Yes. Anyway, back to you. Yep. So uh, uh, you, was, you were talking about enjoying radio. Can you s sort of give me a few more hints as to why? Well, the thing is, in television, uh, at the ABC, they seem to take themselves a little bit more seriously. Now, I thought that was a bit odd, because it was a much simpler operation than a commercial one, with commercial breaks and this happening and all the production and all that. There were some wonderful people yep. there, I might add, yep. wonderful people. But it was the system that was a bit alien. Yes. So eventually found my way into radio, and I thought, this is wonderful, because a lot of camaraderie, mm. and the folk were great, and they still mingle today. Yes. I thought it was more like a family in radio at the ABC than in TV. Others will probably disagree. Those that spent a lot of time in TV and enjoyed it on the many OBs, uh, very active group that was, they will probably see it in a different light, and probably rightly so. There is, if I'm right in saying, what we might call a museum devoted to television and radio, and you look after the website for that. Now, correct me on any well, of the terminologies or anything. I was looking after the website. Beth McKechnie is now doing so, mm -hmm. and a good job. I'm actually looking after WATV History, Ah, now com. tell me tell me what that means you have to do. With colleagues such as uh, Richard Ashton and Gordon McColl, who I should point out were the very first two cameramen on the opening night at Channel 7. So they're great mates, and we get around and we research all the stories, go through the archives. Well, we were, do we were going through the archives out at 7, of course, now they've that's moved. No, that's no longer there. Well, the 7 we knew is no longer there. Well, I think the building still is as we speak, but for how much longer, I don't know. It'd be great if that was turned into a museum. Yes. I mean, there's all that room. They had been storing all the uh, Christmas floats out there, Christmas pageant floats. That alone would be a great place. That Half the place could be full of those. Yes. Now, you may remember the gent that started the place off, Sir James Carruthers. Yes. He was a collector. Yes. And if you have, look, have a look at what's in the State Library, his archive, he's kept everything there, from his school tie, you name it. Well, he and others like Frank Moss 
started a museum there, and they had everything. They had a Bessemer bus, uh, they had a trolley bus, they had a Canberra bomber, they had a um, a, a jet uh, fighter. Um, oh, right, yes, yes. They had all manner of things there. Yeah. And sadly, that all disappeared after it changed hands, and uh, Robert Holmes, of course, took over. On this program, too, we're very conscious of, of our heritage, and... and Memories are wonderful, but you do need some tangible things to hold on to those memories, I think. Well, yeah, it's, there's two things I see. There's the stories, but to illustrate those stories, you either need footage or photos or the actual artefacts. Now, that's where the museum comes in handy, because they are going around collecting all this. They're collecting memorabilia that belongs to cinemas and television, but uh, the website also touches on you know, everything from radio... And, and the one that I'm involved in, WATV, that's also involved in performing arts, uh, radio, and, and everything of that nature. I tell you what, Lynn here at the studio will have uh, the website and so on for people to tune into to have a look and see what's there too. So right. we'll make sure that that's... So if you just uh, ring into Lynn here at the studio and she'll give you that information. But perhaps you can give us the website anyway, just at, off the top of your head. Very simple. Uh, WATV History, one word. Dot com. Brilliant. Very easy. Very easy. Look, Ken, get yourself back here as soon as possible with some more stories and perhaps even we can entice a few of, of our living legends to come and talk to us as well. That would be great. 